Hey everybody, I'm Alucia. Today we're playing Marathon 2 and it's gonna be awesome. We have reached level 10. Eat it, vid boy! And we are outside a very large lake of lava. Ooh, lots of ammo. That's both nice and kind of scary too, because it means we're going to need a lot of ammo. Most likely. But then again, when will we ever not need a lot of ammo? That is a bunch of aliens. Let me just run around a little bit so that the aliens fight each other. Because you can make them shoot each other and then they fight. Please fight. Come on, guys. You know you want to. Haha! They can grenade themselves. Save myself some ammo. Uh, I'm almost out of ammo for this. I'll use some of my plasma ammo. I have tons of using that ammo, so why not? Ah, uh, there we go. Sorry about that. I should not be so quiet. Uh, so you may be asking yourselves, but Lucia, where are we supposed to go from here? This room is empty. Well, there's a door here. Yeah, it's the discolored chunk of wall. There's the door. There are phone, a switch, a save point, a shield recharge, which I don't need. I'm going to save. And a terminal. And the terminal has something to tell us. I have transported you to the Citadel of Antiquity. The primary tower is inaccessible by direct teleportation, evidently because some of the Citadel's defenses are still functional. This ancient Citadel was the site of the compulsive battle in the short war between the Sft and the Four. Conclusive battle, not compulsive. What's wrong with me? Finding a way into the primary tower will be difficult because the ground floor entrance is locked and blocked by a moat. You will have to overcome both these obstacles to gain entrance. And that's just what we got. So we are supposed to go and find a way to get through those. Let's hit the switch. Now these, I believe, are actually elevators. And if you take them, they take you to a two times shield restore point. And that one. Oh. Uh, there are four elevators. There's a two times shield restore point. I think there's four. There's at least three. Okay, there's three elevators. These two. One of which takes you down, and the other one takes you up from that. And this one takes you upstairs, a long way, geez, this is a tall elevator, to a room, which contains a big cache of ammo, so including a whole bunch of shotgun ammo. I went from 2 to 13 shotgun ammo there, so it's about 11 shotgun ammo to have in that room. So you may want to come and visit it. Getting back down will take a little while, because you got to wait for the elevator to go all the way up, and then all the way back down again, because it activates when you walk over it. Yeah. Stupid smart elevators. Stupid smart elevators. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so, now that we've done that, I'm going to save again so that I don't have to do it again if I die. And let's continue. There's no ele This ele uh, elevator was activated by the switch in that room. That was what that switch did. So now we can ride this thing up. And fight some more four. Whoa, that is a lot of dudes. Holy crud, that is a lot of dudes. Do not like. Do not want. Thankfully, they're just warriors, mostly. That are our... These are these. The sit are, unfortunately, our enemies still. Because these ones are still under control of the four. Ah! Guided bolts. Guided bolts are bad. Ow, ow. Where the heck did you guys come from? You weren't in that room a minute ago. What shenanigans? Ow, what is this? Seriously, where did these guys come from? Oh, they're coming over the ledge over here. I guess they must be on the other side of that lava room. Ow, 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 ow. I have nearly died. Ow, ow. Phew. That was really close. I'm gonna go revisit that three that two times health recharger because holy crud, I nearly died. Let me just grab double health again. It's a really good thing I did that double health because I would have actually died there. <laughs> I not stopped if I had to do that. Save again so that I don't have to refight that because there's a good chance I would die if I tried to do so. And get out of here. Come on, elevator. There we go. Alright, so if we head back in here. 
Uh, there is a shotgun down in the middle of this lava, I believe. I think this is where the shotgun is hidden. I would not recommend trying to get it while the lava is still there. You do eventually get to do some things that will lower the lava level, and then you can go and get it safely, but right now, you can. It's just really, really dangerous, because you got to run through the lava and then figure out how to get out of it without dying, which is kind of bad. And so I won't be doing that, because it's kind of bad. And I suck a little bit too hard at the game for me to feel comfortable trying to do that. Four, four to shoot. Should I assume for a while. Ah, ah, ah. I still got a fusion gun somewhere in here. I have too many weapons. <laughs> I I never thought I would say that, but I may have too many weapons. Yay, another save point. Saving again because I don't really like the idea of dying here and not having and having to do everything. Wee! Are you a door? You're not a door. Darn you, wall! Why must you not be door? Walls are not doors. Doors are sometimes walls. Alright, there's another door over here. I don't know what that switch I hit did. It did a thing, and I'm sure it's a good thing, because most switches are good things. There are thankfully very few places in the game where hitting a switch will just, like, randomly kill you without warning. Luckily. Like, that would be a real dick move, and I know that there are games that do that, but I don't think this game does that. I really like the way that this look in this, uh, texture set. They look really cool. I really like the way that they look. They look different in the second game than in the first game by default, and this texture pack makes them look slightly different, but a lot more high quality and better. So, I'm actually quite happy with the way that they look. Oh, and there is a little thingy here, which that switch may have opened. Let's shoot. And some ammo gets teleported in. Yay, ammo! Well, let's see what this terminal has to say, and also I have maxed out on assault rifle and grenade launcher ammo, so I'm going to waste a little bit of ammo here to reload it. Grab the ammo replacements, and I will be using the assault rifle for a while. Whoa, let's not walk into the lava, that would be bad. Translator active. When once fought in brutal combat, when hatred burned the tissue of one's enemy, one clan, the Sftkur, reclusive and solitary, abandoned La'oan. The clan went forth, stopping on Kalia, the third sister moon of La'oan, to build a new home, free from their warring brothers. For a thousand and one orbits, the clan was forgotten, a memory lost upon the battlefield smoke, until the all-powerful Yarrow sent Kalia to the, out to the stars. The Yarrow are important to this mythos and story of Marathon. They will become very important when we reach the third game, although they are still important even before that. I realize that probably none of you have ever played the game Pathways into Darkness. Pathways into Darkness was a game which was released by Bungie long before they released Marathon. Well, okay, I wouldn't say long before. A couple of years before they released Marathon. I don't know what that switch did again. Let's backtrack and see whether or not there's anything that's changed back here. Uh, in Pathways into Darkness, you were part of a UN team. Well, actually, you were part of a US team. The other team was Russian, which were sent into a strange temple which had appeared in the Yucatan Peninsula after a message was received from an alien force uh, whose name was spelled J-J-A-R-R-O. But, uh, yeah, J-J-A-R-R-O. But the implication was that it meant to be pronounced Yarrow, because J is pronounced with a Y sound in Latin, I think it is. I don't remember for sure. One of the ancient languages, which is a root language to many modern languages. Anyway, these aliens claimed that something was under the Yucatan, that the, there was an object under the Yucatan Peninsula, which was an ancient alien thing, which had come and crash landed on Earth many millions of years ago. The implication is this is what killed off the dinosaurs. And that it was finally starting to wake up. And so your group had 48 hours to get there, stop it from waking up and get out before the Yarrow could reach the planet and take it away. They were going to come and remove it because they had uh, 
deal with it in some permanent way. The implication throughout Marathon 2 and Infinity, as we'll see when we get to Infinity, which is the third game in the series, is that Pathways into Darkness and Marathon take place in the same universe. That they are, in fact, the same setting, just many hundreds of years apart. This probably means that the Yarrow referenced here are the same aliens that we saw that were appeared in Pathways into Darkness. And that will be important when we reach Marathon 3, or Marathon Infinity, which I will hopefully explain more of when we get there. For now, it's just interesting to note that there is actually continuity between the various Bungie games in this era of their creation to make them all sort of occur in the same universe, or at least have references to one another. Uh, Halo was originally going to be a fourth marathon game, which took place between Marathon 1 and Marathon 2, and centered around the war between the humans on Earth and the Four, and the four during the era when after Durandal would have taught humans how to build faster than light capable weapons and defend themselves against the Four, but before the era in which Durandal reached La Owen. But the game got rebuilt really heavily when the company got bought by Microsoft to become its own thing. That's why there's so many references to things that you've seen here in Marathon in those games, is because they were originally going to be a Marathon game. Okay, there's a terminal in here. I assume that this terminal is not going to take us off the level because we haven't finished everything here, so let's see what the terminal has to say. We're going to have visitors soon. The western arm of the four battle groups of four battle group seven is en route and should be here in about twenty hours. Battle group seven represents over ten percent of the active four naval strength. I doubt whether even I can hold them back with a single ship, but I will try. So we've been informed that four battle group seven is coming with intent to destroy us. This is important. It will be relevant to the rest of the... Ah! Ah! <sighs> I did not mean to do that. I will be right back. All right, let's try this again with less failure this time. Less of me just randomly running into lava. That sounds like a good plan to me. I hear a... Uh huh. A path across the lava raising. Yay! That is a lot of fusion gun ammo. So we got a fusion gun and a lot of fusion gun ammo here. If you're wondering why there are redundant weapons in the game, part of the reason is because you get you it's possible to miss a lot of the weapons. The other reason why is because there used to be a level cheat in the game, which would put you to any level, but you would only start with your default weapons. So I think your default pistol basically. So I think some of those weapons were actually put in so that it was possible to find them if you had level cheated your way to a level. So that you weren't completely hosed just because you had chosen to skip levels. Which is kind of neat. I actually kind of like that. I, I think that's part of why they're there. I don't know. Maybe they're just there because they should be there. I have no idea. But let's keep going and see what's behind these doors. Uh, I think this is... Nope. I haven't been through that door before, so let's try this one. See if there's anything on this side of the thing. Aha! There's a side passage over here. Oh! And suddenly more sft arriving. Ow. I walked right into that one. Deserved that. Okay, and now we're back at the beginning. But... There is a thing over there. Wonder if I can get to it. Aha! I can! Uh... Whee! I really hope there's not lava at the bottom of this. There might be. Okay, there isn't. Good. <laughs> like, there might be lava at the bottom of this. I didn't quite think that through quite as thoroughly as I should have. Uh, what's in here? I'm assuming there's another way to get into this area. Because it, it's usually not very common that they force you to do that. I'm going to run through open air to get to a place. Like, run around a corner in open air. That's kind of unusual. Okay, this is how you get out of those lava pits, if you fall into the lava pits. Um, what's the other place? This is probably the way out of all of the lava pit, the basins in the level. But, you know, it's worth exploring everywhere because sometimes you find cool things. Like this! Which is a boatload of 
Yeah, see, the lava level here has actually gone down, as you can tell from the from where it was before, so. Now we can get the shotgun, and we have 44 shotgun ammo. So I may actually use the shotguns for a while at some point. Not right now, probably, because I don't think I need it right at this moment. But let's go back into our place over here and recharge our shields, save, and see whether or not we've managed to raise the bridge. Zoop. Shielding. Come back up here. Save our game. 41. Let's go back outside and see whether or not we've raised the bridge. We have! The bridge is raised and there's a terminal here. And there's also some enemies inside. You know what? I've got a ton of shotgun ammo. Shotguns! Glorious shotguns! Not quite as busted on this difficulty as they are on the lower difficulties, but still, really good! <laughs> Took me a lot of ammo there. More than I would have liked, but, you know. Whatever. It's not like I don't have the ammo to burn. I think I burned through about half of my shotgun ammo there. But that was also a lot of enemies, so... You know, whatever. Uh, I don't think there are any secrets in this room, so let's read the terminal and see where it takes us. With the imminent arrival of the Four Fleet, the humans and my sft have begun enhancing the defenses of their headquarters. Even if I have to abandon them, they will be able to hold out for a long time. I am going to teleport you to the higher levels of the Citadel. Hopefully we can find some useful information at the top. We must determine what happened to the 11th Sft clan. But I just found out what happened to them. They moved to the moon, and then somebody flung the moon into deep space. That's totally a legitimate answer, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, we will find out more about what happened to them as we go along here. And we have arrived at another level. Uh, and I am surrounded by Flicta, which is not a reassuring thing. So we have reached the Hard Stuff Rules, level 11. Uh, thank you for joining me. I will see you guys next time as we try to take out a whole bunch of Flicta and make our way up this tower.